She told me I had the baseline yeah. And everything will be fine oh, yeah. She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation She told me I had the baseline Everything will be fine She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation Hey there, sweet souls. How are you? It's your first fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, for today's Pick a Card reading, we are asking what opportunities are coming your way. We have pile number one with the lepelect heart stone. We have pile number two with the white moonstone, heart moonstone. And we have pile number three, three, which is the Azurite heart stone. So take a moment to take a look at all three piles, which speaks to you, the Lepolite, the moonstone, or the Azurite, or which pile? Pile number one, two, or three speaks to you and I'll see you in your reading. Hey there sweet souls, how are you? It's your forest fairy here, nice to see you again. Well, pile number one. I still have to remember to, to welcome you. Pile number one, I open up with sweet souls, that's funny. All right, pile number one, Today's pick a card, as I put it, the intention into each card, and they're sticking because we're experiencing humidity here at the Hundred Acre Woods, is um, what opportunities are coming your way? What opportunities? And, and I guess it's, and you have to remember these are general reads. The opportunities are coming, what opportunities are coming your way for pile number one? It does have to do a lot with what you, pile number one, are bringing in. What is it that, what is, what is it that you're bringing in? What opportunities would you like to see happen in your life? So the question is, I'm going to do it again. There it is, I see it. What opportunities are coming into pile number one's life? What opportunities are you bringing in? Let's take a look. What opportunities are coming to pile number one? What opportunity? Oh, those two right there. The cards are really sticky, like really sticky. All right, these ones in particular, they're very thin cards, so they're sticking to each other. Are you in a sticky situation? I don't know for what. You got yourself into a sticky situation. Okay, what opportunities, there it is, are coming to pile number one. What opportunities? What opportunities are coming to pile number one? What opportunities are coming? Pile number one. Let's take a look. I'm always curious about opportunities. And opportunities are really of what you make of it, right? What opportunities are coming to pile number one? What are the opportunities? So sticky. 
All right, last cards out are these, I just call them the little baby cards, but they're the astrological cards, which we start off with. Let's get these closer. To fit the last two cards in. All right. And they're all curling on me. Try seeing to distraction. All right. The ask, these are the opportunities that are coming your way. Pile number one, Mars. Mars and the eighth house. So you might not see these coming with that eighth house energy. Mm. Let's take a look. Mars. An eighth house. What gives me? Mars is asking you, pile number one, what gives you passion? Because that's where the opportunities lie. What gives you passion, courage, and drive? What makes me angry? That's what Mars is asking you. What are my animal instincts? Aggression, action, desire, competition, courage, and passion. Well, interestingly enough, the eighth house deals with some of those, um, the house of transformation, yes. Both Mars and there was, before sort of Pluto was um, a, or, or assigned to Scorpio, Mars ruled Scorpio. In the eighth house is inheritance, death, sexuality, transformation, the occult, what must be left behind. And when new opportunities are coming your way, what must you leave behind is what the eighth house is asking you. Pile number one. What are your passions? What gets you up and going? That's what Mars is asking you. What are you ready, willing and ready to fight for? So let's take a look. Taurus energy. Taurus. Oh, I love the, the energy of Taurus. That is grounding, very grounding. The energy of growth, nurturing and support, integration energy with direction, Mars, allowing the structure to take its own shape. The unfolding of energy expands and Jupiter is in Taurus, the sign of Taurus right now. A new structure is established with this Taurus energy. So these are leaving of old structures and the building of new structures. These are upside down. Cat, ooh, I love that energy. Guardianship, detachment, sensuality, mystery, magic, independence, wisdom, and vigilance. Now, the detachment, especially when you're building something new, not to have too many expectations. You can have goals. Goals and expectations are two different things. Goals are what you are working towards and striving, but an expectation is what you expect to get back with all this effort, work, and time that you've put into it. Goals are what can can cause um, disappointment and one to give up. Whereas if you reach and strive your goals, you then set new goals. These opportunities that you then can recognize with the work that you are doing on whatever it is you're building with the Taurus and it's with your passions with Mars and something needs to be left with that eighth house uh, energy of transformation. Who are you transforming into from what you have been? The question is, are you leaving old structures? Are you leaving behind old belief systems, values that maybe were not yours, that you have different values than what you grew up with? What are the family values that you want to take with you and pass on to your, your um, children? And which ones do you think, you know what? I'm not going to participate in those, let's say, the the values that my grandparents or parents held. I, as I've raised my children, I was very scheduled. I had a, a, a full schedule. I dare say over-scheduled, but I was a very 
active <laughs> child. And so what I did is I did not put my kids into any sports or anything that was organized so that they could play. I sometimes wonder, was that the right thing to do? And now as, as I look back, yes, for my children, that was one thing that because I grew up very scheduled, I raised them. So these were different things that I left behind. That doesn't mean that I can't change or that they, they might raise their children and say, yeah, mom was so easy going. We didn't have any extracurricular activities. And so I'm going to put my kids into soccer, into baseball, into whatever, tennis, you know, swimming, whatever. And so they might then go the opposite and, and say, well, my mom believed in just free play and not really organized sports, but we were really isolated in the Hundred Acre Woods and we wanted to get around other kids, this type of thing, right? Into the woods, stranger in a strange land, new experiences, feeling uncertain. Oh, interesting, transition zone. And we've got eighth house, transformation. So that's, that's a synchronicity right there, 29. 29. Let's take a look at what the fairies have. I turned that over while I was talking and didn't even really pay attention. It's time for you to move beyond your shelter, oh, and comfort zone, to fly a little further from home, to take a chance and go into a place where you have felt uncomfortable. Things will feel strange and uncomfortable for a time, but you will grow and change and become stronger as a result. This fairy knows. There are places she must walk through that are exposed and challenging. She will take great care as she does so, but walk on she will. There is no turning back and there will be great rewards and flowering of talents and skills as a result of this courage. The opportunities that are coming your way, I believe, as I'm seeing in the cards here, pile number one, are really about what your passions are with that Mars card. and going through that transformation. It's, it's, it's no easy task to transform, to change, to get out of the matrix, to realize and see. I have been programmed to want to go to school, university, um, to get a piece of paper in a degree. I'm staying in these institutions to, to really establish this programming to then get into the corporate slavery world and to then get recognized by said peers, bosses, family members, whoever. Um, for what? To then become a corporate worker. For what? To keep the system going. Why? These are all questions that I think both the 8th house and Mars is asking you. And what is it? What are your skills? They're, they're, the, the lack of skills in the new generation, even just I was a pianist as I grew up, as I said, I, was, I had a, a, a heavy schedule, but I was a pianist and I practiced for hours and hours and hours to perfect that skill. Musicians. Um, guitarists, There's our, the, the musicians are now just pushing buttons and mixing sounds of other um, artists. Can they play an instrument or can they take sound and combine sounds? Even that, I have to admit, that is magic to me. My opener, music man, is, is drum and bass guy and amazing, but he can't play an instrument. That, not to say that one is better than the other, there's skills on both sides of that coin. But we're losing the skills of playing instruments, of drawing. We can go on a computer program, we can get AI to do it, of writing. Again, ChatGPT. We can get other sort of technological advancements to do it for us. And what is that doing for our skill set, right? These questions, I think, Into the Woods Fairy is asking you to, to push yourself through, to do the work, to do, and these opportunities will come to you as you go into the direction that you, that your soul is taking it. Now, a soulful repair. 
the root of all suffering is attachment. We had mentioned the difference between goal and expectations. Attachment to said um, result rather than achieving that goal, rather than pushing yourself into that space of I want to learn this concerto and I'm going to sit here at this piano until I have learned, memorized and take the music away and remember and play that concerto, whatever that means to you. That for me was my goal as a kid growing up, as a teenage girl, I wanted these goals. What are your goals, sweet pile number one? Because with those goals will come the opportunities along with them. Fifteen. Let's take a look at what Buddha has to say. Fifteen. The root of all suffering is attachment. What is the origin of, of suffering? Desire and selfishness. It is lust, passion, and the thirst for experience that learns for pleasures everywhere, leading to a continual rebirth. What is the annihilation of suffering? It is the radical and total annihilation of this attachment, the abandonment, the liberation, and the deliverance from passion. What is the path that leads to annihilation of suffering? It is the holy eightfold path that leads to the annihilation of suffering, which consists of right view, right decision, right speech, right action, right living, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. With the gesture of understanding in his right hand, the medicine Buddha holds the micro balance plant that can aid in the healing of suffering and sickness. In his left, a begging bowl representing non-attachment. Feel the blessings of the medicine Buddha and feel the peace of the awakened soul. Now my question is, is the opportunity that's coming your way, is it that you are, your soul is awakening to its soul's purpose, to the direction that your soul, that God is directing you, is taking you, is leading you? Interesting. Self-observance. This is how you find out if that's those if that's the case. And new consciousness. Are the opportunities coming your way? This is Earth. This is Lyra. This is present. This is future. Is it the new consciousness? Are you stepping into the new consciousness? Into just consciousness. Because I think we've been asleep for a very long time. Pile number one. You and many others have been asleep and it's just a matter of waking up but not in this woke sense but in really waking up to who you are to why you're here to what purpose your soul has on this earth so let's take a look let's take a look i'm going to do 54 first and go in sequential order 54 there is a new consciousness being born on earth right now I can feel it. It's true. It has nothing to do with true nature of existence beyond belief, thought, or emotion. This new consciousness is sprouting from our beings like a flower reaching towards the sun, but we often obstruct it by clinging to our distractions, such as opinion, drama, or blame. We must become the flower reaching towards the sun and value it above all else if we are to transform, and we've got transformation and transition zone, absolutely, if we are to transform. Take a few moments every day to visualize yourself as that flower reaching towards the sun. Let the sun nourish you and give you everything you need. And the sun, again, is what gives this earth life. All the planets, even the largest, the Jupiter, Mars, revolve around the sun in this solar system. So like, the and again, that the, the natural sort of wonder and awe of nature, and as I live here in the 100 Acre Woods, I'm, I'm amazed by it every single time, every single day, I'm amazed that these seeds or these bulbs, these plants can push through, even the little crocuses in the summer can push through snow, not just the soil, but then, oh, they get to the top of the soil and it's like, oh my goodness, I have now more snow to go through. 
and they push through just to get, they can feel the sun, they know where to go. That's your soul's purpose. Your soul's purpose is to push through the distraction, the narratives, the, the opinions, the woke agenda to reach where you are to go. And that is to the state of consciousness, of a new opening, new consciousness of the new earth. But this is the opportunities that are coming your way. Self-observance, 64, six, sorry, 67. After much struggle as a species, just like the little plant struggles to get through to the sun, the Lyrans eventually healed themselves by honestly and objectively observing themselves. At first, this can be a difficult task, but in the end, it leads to powerful transformation. Again, with the transformation, we've got the eighth house and that transformation zone of the fairy, the transformation of new consciousness. And again, speaking about transformation, are these the opportunities coming your way is transformation. It seems like that's what the cards are telling you. It leads to powerful transformation as long as it is done without judgment. You know here at Force Fairy Tarot, this is a judgment-free zone. The power of self-observation is essentially, is essential, my apologies, for any person or species who seeks transformation. Begin this process now. Just observe. See your habits and your patterns without need the need to fix anything. It is an oh an alchemical process that produces spiritual evolution on a profound level. The love and wisdom of the Lyran forefathers can guide you. Just ask for their help. Interesting. That is very interesting. It looks to me, pile number one, that the opportunities that are coming your way is in fact transformation, Queen of Wands. The Two of Cups. The Two of Cups. The Queen of Wands. Let's see what the tarot has. The Eight Communication. The Eight of Wands. The King of Swords. And the Star. Very Aquarius energy with the King of Swords and the Star. And communicating the transformation that you are observing. Okay the imagination station. Now this is one of the extra cards in the panda deck. The king of wands right above that king of swords. And now we have the king and the queen and the five of pentacles. Just ask for help, says self-observance. And do you see how in this five of pentacles that one panda is helping the other as he has dropped his pentacles? Interesting. I just love this panda deck because it's so sweet. So let's go to the light and shadow. The Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands. The embodiment of the element of fire. The Queen of Wands nourishes all the characteristics of the fiery temperament. Passion. That's very Mars. Inspiration, brilliance, vitality. She bestows courage and resolve. She promises success even in the difficult situation. The card may signal the presence in the questioner's life, and that's you, pile number one, of someone who resembles her, a woman of fiery character marked by fervent feelings, vivid enthusiasm, and an ador for life. Or this could be you, pile number one, that you are really transforming into this queen of wands, into this passionate, fiery soul as you discover who you truly are, as you release your soul, as you discover, observe your soul, why you're here as you're discovering with consciousness, two cups, why you're here, what your soul's purpose is. That's beautiful. The two of cups, love affection, flowing, good feelings, the loving unity of opposites, in compliments, romance, courtship, and diligence, harmonious union of two, in cradled exchange, the overflowing nectar of love, nourishing them on their lotus seat, as you can see here, with two full cups overflowing, one for each. Beautiful. Eight of Wands, King of Swords, and the Star. Now the Eight of Wands, definitely, look at how ever, as we talked about the blooms, the Eight of Wands is you really speaking your mind, 
your um, your truth and doing it in a way that does not offend that does not um, shock but just simply is the eight of wands is movement alignment yes as you align to your soul's purpose fast-paced change transformation and a direction with that Mars card, you have direction. Taurus is also very focused on the goal. The King of Swords. The King of Swords is the intellectual power, the truth, as we said, speaking your truth, authority, and the discipline to do so. The star. The star is hope, faith, renewal and spirituality and you could be coming into your spirituality you could be really discovering what that means to you right above that is the five of pentacles so the opportunities coming your way really seems to be all oh, pile number one having to do with spirituality finding your souls your soul's purpose really going deep into your spirituality and maybe through the mind through the intellectual that could be reading a lot of books listening to a lot of podcasts, um, finding those souls that really align with what your soul feels like, and communication, communicating maybe with them um, or communicating with others that really align and align again with that imagination station. Let's see with that five of pentacles. Right above this star, the five of pentacles. Let's see what the pandas have to say. Pentacles may be broken and lost, and bamboos may be eaten, but your spirit remains strong. It's very much, this reading is very much telling you that the opportunity is coming your way. Pile number one really has to do with your spiritual enlightenment, with you ascending, with you discovering who you truly are, speaking up for your values, for your belief systems, and discovering, waking up, but not in the woke sense, really. You always have something. There is never nothing. Even if it feels like you can't have everything, your something can be everything. When you think you have nothing, you always have your soul. Resilience, patience, realignment, and humility. The shadow, and those are the light attributes of the Five of Pentacles, but the shadow is poverty consciousness, lack, trapped in failure and bitter resentment and i really feel that that's what you are transforming from that you are getting rid of the lack um mentality that that being boxed into i can only do this i can only have that i'm i'm limited in where i can live and who i can love king of wands and that's what's the transformation you are seeing through the matrix you are seeing through the programming and really listening to your soul's purpose the king of wands what's that i see it in my mind's eye whatever i see i achieve oh that's very taurus energy absolutely whatever i dream i will make reality queen of wands right here i see myself getting cuter and cuter i shall be cuteness and explosion unleashed the light attributes of the king of wands is a visionary leader entrepreneur passionate about dreaming and creating and we have the imagination station right next to him the shadow attributes of that king of wands is arrogance um, thirst for power so just be aware just be aware of the shadow attributes of these um, energies but this is the imagination what, what you think about you bring about what you move towards with that Mars energy the transformation that you're going under these are the opportunities that you will then be able to see and take action towards as you see them you might with the five of pentacles not been able to see these opportunities because you had the lack mindset which means they wouldn't have been obvious to you and as you get into the king of wands into the king of swords into the queen of wands energy you can then see the opportunities that you in fact you are creating from your mind's eye imagination station the imagination station last card out the power of what if what if will propel you to uncharted areas of consciousness and put 
and push you to expand towards your potential. Your comfort zone. This is a space of knowing and certainty. This is where you are standing right now, the starting point of your expansion. Your wildest dreams. What is something miraculous that is possible and within your reach? What is something good and something amazing and, mar and marvelous that you have never allowed yourself to imagine before? What if these things work out for the best? And then imagine. How can you allow yourself to anticipate better futures and outcomes? How can you activate the powers of your imagination and visualization for powerful manifestations? That's the opportunities that are coming your way, Pile One, and that is the ability to see that your imagination station with the last card out there is exactly what you need to step into to not only see the opportunities coming here, but then take action towards them and then to realize with deep, deep observation, self-observation, that it is in fact what you imagined that is coming your way. And that's what I see for you, pile number one. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number two. How are you? It's your forest fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, pile number two, today's question for today's pick a card is what opportunities are coming your way? So let's take a look at what opportunities are coming your way. Pile number two. What opportunities? Oh, now I'm going to do a little bit more shuffling there. What opportunities are coming your way? What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number two very humid here at the Hundred Acre Woods, so all the cards are sticking. They're sticking to the table, to each other. What opportunities are coming your way? What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number two. What opportunities are coming your way. What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number two. What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number two. What opportunities? Opportunities are coming your way. Pile number two, what opportunities are coming your way? Let's take a look. Oh, well, there's one right there. What opportunities? Are coming your way. These are so sticky. The humidity. What opportunities are coming your way, Colin? Let's get the intent into every single deck. Oh, well, there's one for you. What opportunities are coming? That card came to pile number two's way. I see these two as well. And my final tarot deck, the amazing pandas. What opportunities are coming your way, pile number two? What opportunities are coming to pile number two? And the final little baby deck, which is the little astrological deck. I see these two. There. Let 
there we go. All right. Let's take a look, pile number two. Mercury. First card out. And Virgo. Well, isn't Mercury comfortable in Virgo? It rules Virgo. So, let's take a look. Mercury. Mercury asks you, pile number two, how do I express myself? How do I process ideas and information? It's the mind, communication, intellect, reason, and language. Virgo. Virgo asks you the strengths. What are your strengths? Are you humble, logical, responsible, organized, orderly, modest, and devoted? Or are you obsessive, critical, nitpicky, and a perfectionist? That's what Virgo, Virgo is asking you. So let's find out. Let's find out what opposite law of continuity. The law of continuity. I'm going to put this feather here so we can see the cards. All right, law of continuity. Actually, I can move this here. I like to see it beside the cards. There. All right. The law of continuity. Purpose and reason are connected to all that surrounds you. Continuity and balance, a thread of strength brings reason and understanding. Spiritual continuity provides us with a lifeline and with safety. Higher and lower selves merge. And as I, as I mentioned, both the weaknesses and strengths of Virgo, that's when the lower, so if you are nitpicky, if you're um, obsessive, if you're, um, as the Virgo card says, that's bringing together both the higher and lower selves, they merge, an understanding of two realities and two worlds that blend. Connections are made, linkages are found, and bridges are located within, and I believe within your own day-to-day, -day, as Virgo rules the sixth house. Again, Virgo is humble, logical, responsible, organized, orderly, modest, and devoted. So, Virgo's telling you, along with Mercury, and Mercury is of the mind, to be able to um, really process outside information internally as well as express yourself so you don't get into that sort of resentful, passive-aggressive energy. Because Mercury is really reminding you to communicate that you, your mind, that your intellect, your reason, and um, is really at the forefront when it's beside Virgo. Your totem is goat. Interesting. Quick-witted independence, initiation, opportunist stability, opportunis, opportunism. That's where the emphasis on what syllable. Affluence, ambition, and acquisition. Very interesting, because. When Mer Mercury is very quick-witted, Mercury is very, and Virgo is very independent, the um, stability of Virgo, the stability of day-to-day, -day, your day-to-day -day activity, working, going to work, coming home, um, this is what brings along the law of continuity, of really seeing both the lower and higher selves and knowing that in this world we have to not only deal with the lower frequencies, the density of this 3D world, imagine being, um, let's say, a, a starseed or, or someone from a completely different dimension, realm, galaxy, and, and volunteering, saying, yeah, I, I, I understand it's heavy, I understand, and coming here for getting your memory wiped of everything that you've ever experienced known as a being and then getting dropped into this 3D world. How much that would, oh, confuse. Imagine. 
So some of us that have been here for a while, who've been on Earth for a while, who know, who've, who've come back around, and who've, who's, who've been here on Earth time after time after time. I feel for those that, and, and a couple of my kids, I believe, are brand new here because um, I recognize their confusion, which is why I kept them off the internet so that outside influences, entities through the internet could not influence them, that I was their influence. Now as they grow older, they can see through the matrix. This Virgo and Mercury combination is really speaking to me that the, your opportunities to communicate, your opportunities to teach, your opportunities to really express that which is you have experienced that works in your case, that might work for others. Let's see what the fairies have to say. Secret doorway working with intuition, second sight opening, dimensional doorways. Yes, very much. I was picking up on doorways, on dimensions, on other beings, entities coming here and sort of being very confused as to what this all means. Why is there so much violence and um, hatred and animosity and confusion and negativity here on earth right now has it always been this way um if you're a new soul a new star seed so to speak coming here um it might be all brand new you whereas us that have been here for a couple lifetimes we've seen it in different um lifetimes right in in different and and again we humans think on linear sort of uh timelines we in fact mended timelines so even the timeline of a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, uh, sometimes doesn't make sense. The opportunities coming to you is to really be able to see, see with your mind's eye, see, and working with dimensional doorways. These are going to lead to opportunities to manifest in this world. Secret doorway, let's see what the fairies have to say. Number five, change. Changes are difficult, I do have to say. Being able to see change ahead, but not knowing how to deal with it. Understanding that in order to learn something new, one must forget what one thinks one knows. Getting down to the level of others who you do not know. Receiving messages from nature. Understanding the wonderment is the natural process of change. This beautiful being right here is half human, half fae, and is rediscovering herself and her ability to intuit the messages of nature, all of all that is. She is an awakening being who is undergoing a process of deep and real change based on her association with the fae and her ability to finally understand that the trees in the natural world are keys to establishing communication with fae. But she stands on the threshold of a world that seems ill-fitted to her. To understand and to roam freely within, what can she do? Change her shape, become smaller like Alice in Wonderland? Truly, in order to reach the wonderment of fairy, you must become smaller. But that doesn't mean to become a reduced version of yourself. Rather, it means to approach them or whatever situation is currently at hand as a beginner as a walker in a new land, and to be humble, ah, Virgo, and willing to learn. This threshold will see her walk into another land, but she will still be able to walk in, on her own. S uh, see the light pouring through, through this humble doorway? That's enlightenment, right there. Enlightenment, meaning more knowledge, understanding, and the ability to communicate, Mercury. She is peering through this doorway through which light can shine into the darkness, into the darkening world of humans. Yes, and that's exactly what I was talking about. A world that is only darkened by the thought forms that provide a kind of emotional pollution in our world. She is ready to step through to allow her imagination's wisdom to lead her into new realms and to accept the mystery of fairy communication. They have much to share with her, and she is open to learning. 
Fairies circle around her now, rejoicing at this breakthrough, and she is breaking through her own fears of communicating with the fairy beings and unlocking a doorway to another dimension. As a result, her life's work will start now, and she will find herself in the right place at the right time. As long as her relationship with nature remains pure and strong, so too will her relationship with the natural world. As this relationship deepens, her health and material wealth will also benefit in powerful ways as the fairies love to see their own prosper and thrive and to take messages back. She is a luminal being, an in-betweener, and will walk between worlds and in three realms of human, of fairy, and of the afterlife, the Summerland. Now that's very interesting. I say that because it looks to me pile number two, that the opportunities that are coming your way are to be able to dimension jump, or to be able to see and see the doors into different dimensions, into different worlds. We, we all do it every night when we go to sleep. We then go into what we would be called, uh, what would be called dreamland as a child. You're going into dreamland, you're going into the, but that's actually where your body rests and you, um, some, some of you might astral project. I don't know if I've ever I've, caught, I've had near-death experiences, um, and I do sleep very soundly, and I have had vivid dreams. So I guess even, you know, saying, I don't think I've ever dimension jumped. I think I do. It's just I'm not aware of it. I haven't yet opened that door. And maybe this is, um, for you, pile number two, becoming aware of these abilities, becoming aware of the reality that this is just one of many dimensions are they layered is it simultaneous are they parallel again i have no idea there's a lot of theories and um theoretical information out there and that i guess that's where mercury comes into play gather this information what applies to you what resonates with you what does it sound like does it sound like fact or fiction that's for you to know, pile number two. But it really seems to me that you are opening up doorways and these are opportunities that will then show up in your 3D life. The Buddha says, life in this moment, the past is already gone, the future is not yet here. So this is living in the present moment, which is always good advice. These are doors that are opening up for you. And I believe you have to be in the present moment to be able to see through dimensional doors. Just as you use the power of your mind to recall knowledge, Mercury, use that power to attain joy and gladness, to take delight in purity of peace that is above gladness and grief. Upon, reflect upon the Buddha's left hand grasping a lotus and forming the sincerna mudra, the gesture of understanding. Again, Mercury, release attachment to either past or future to produce goodness that does not yet exist in this moment. Interesting. Let's see, with the galactic graduation, Earth, and seeking karmic balance, the Pallades, the present, and again, we speak about the present and the future. Interesting. The future is not yet here. So let's go to 63 and see what the Galactic Heritage cards have for us. 63. As a fourth to fifth density species in this era, Pallades are now experiencing a higher spiritual awakening. They recognize their past imbalances and have gained a sincere intention to balance karma by recognizing that all things happen for a reason and learning from their choices. This card encourages you to do the same. A Palladian guide is most likely assisting you with this. Take an honest look at your repeating challenges and know that karma is at work. These obstacles are gifts to help you move to the next level of your growth. Embrace them and open to the lessons that they are teaching you. It really sounds like pile number two, you are ascending, you are moving up, you are seeing, realizing there are different dimensions, there are, the veil has been sort of dropped on you from birth, from the idea that you're coming down as a human, that your memory is wiped, 
But now you are rediscovering through your soul, through your own soul's purpose, through your own, let's say, meditation, your own dreams, your own synchronicities in this world, that you are, in fact, a multidimensional being. And you're discovering this. These are the opportunities that are coming your way, the opportunity to see you for who you truly are. 76. Graduation. Earth's history has been fraught with struggles, hatred, and fear. The underlying purpose of this was to serve as training for species evolution. It hasn't been easy. From this point of view of the future, humanity has succeeded and experienced a graduation as a species. That is hard to see now. But please trust that everything on Earth is happening for a reason. You and many others are connected to humans from the future who are gently guiding the planet towards this graduation. As you connect with your higher self, and do your spiritual work, you too help the uplift of humanity. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Isn't that just a beautiful message right there? Three of Wands looking into the future as this Earth Future card and Four of Swords that there's right now a time of, of rest as the Four of Swords does, rest mind, body, and soul as we go through this ascension process as a species, as a collective. Let's see what this tarot has, the Nine of Swords. Your wor this is, again, you're worrying your mind about choices. And the Queen of Cups, really taking care of your, your emotional health and your mental health as you go through these there you are, right beside Virgo. I've got the Hermit with the Pandas, the Empress, and the Six of Cups. That's very interesting that we've got the Virgo card right next to the Hermit card, which is ruled by Virgo. And that is finding your light. Do you notice that he's there's darkness all around this panda, and he is looking, focusing in on his light, on these doorways, sitting back and letting things as you realize that everything happens on this earth for a reason and letting what you have planted grow and recognizing others that see their light seeing them to the six of cups interesting the queen of cups right above and let's go down to the light and shadow the three of wands Three of Wands support a climbing youth, straight and tall. These are young trees that sprout leaves, but they also have the character of slender columns, and even the stilts, or or and even of stilts or a ladder. By climbing high up the Three of Wands, we attain a vantage point from which we can view the world. In the distance, a white-sailed ship streams into harbor. The young man looks to its arrival with anticipation and suspense. Has the voyage been successful? Have all the hands returned safe? Will there be treasures or marvels aboard? A black sun shines above. A triangular stone bears the sign of Aries, favorable, favorable influences of fire. So the meaning of this card is in fact goodness great news, happy result, and safe return. It's interesting that I'm being brought back to the secret door. As you go through into different dimensions, um, it's really bringing me back to the safe return, back to whether you astral travel or what have you, these opportunities that are coming your way, you have a safe return. There is safety. You are protected. The Four of Swords is the next one. Swords, truce, pause, rapprochement, rest from conflict, balance and contending forces, finding peace and rest from the contest of opposing interests. You might have people that are in your life that do not see what you see, that have not really awakened to how multidimensional this world really is, how we're just one part of this universe. And with that, they want to bring you back to the matrix. They want to bring you back to, to the programming that they are comfortable in, that they're used to, as you are seeing opportunities elsewhere. This is 
bringing a lot of worry with the Nine of Swords that you have to make choices that might be perceived from others as going against what you've been taught. And pile number two, I just want, as you ascend, I just want to tell you that as you ascend, as you change your vibration, those who stay on, let's say, lower vibrations or just a different vibration, as you rise above, as we see with the three of wands, that if this worries you, this is what's keeping you from achieving your goals, from really um, seeing your opportunities, seeing your potential. And that is with worry. So let's take a look at what the Nine of Wands, the Nine of, or sorry, it's Nine of Swords. This is anxiety, depression, nightmares, trauma. Don't put yourself through any more trauma that this 3D world is already putting you through. Don't relive it. Don't think about it. You're going to miss the opportunities if you do so. The Lover's Card, Harmony, Choices, Relationships that work with you, not against you. The Queen of Cups. That's, that's beautiful. The Queen of Cups. In this deck. Compassion, Comfort, Fluid, and Intuitive. Um, your inner feelings and your self-care are very important at this time. And that is while you are discovering, discovering how you can live in this moment, life in this moment, not in the past, not in the future, but how you can use your Mercury placement. Again, what's in that sixth house for you um, as far as your natal chart that can really show you, guide you along with um, your angels, your guides, whether they be from other star systems, in which direction you are to go. And don't worry your mind about it. This Nine of Swords really brings me back to Mercury and bringing your mind into check, taking the higher view, higher perspective. And yet at the same time, the Hermit card is gonna tell you with the, with the Four of Swords to really take time to find your life's purpose. The Hermit. Oh, I didn't see you there, sorry. That is, I enjoy the mushroom shrubs quite com quiet company and the wisdom rustling in between the leaves. They speak to me since I'm far, far away from the noise of the world. And they tell me all kinds of things I wish to know. The light attributes of the hermit is introspection, higher perspective with the three of wands here, self-awareness as the queen of cups also mentioned, and the search for wisdom as Mercury always tries to attain. The Empress is the next card. Seeing the world through my eyes, for the world is a thing of beauty, and you are a sweet gem made out of nothing but love. Just like the world, you are meant to be adored, and I love you, for you are all my children. My children you will always be, and forever I shall love you. The light attributes are beauty, creative expression, mother nature, and unconditional love. The shadow attributes are very Virgo, overprotection, and um, smothering love, control, codependency. And again, the Queen of Cups can fall into that um, energy, that sort of the, the shadow attributes of that card as well. And that's just warning, just being aware that if you have these tendencies, pile number two, just to be aware, to keep yourself open, to keep your mind open, your heart open, your spirit open, to be able to open up these secret doorways. Now, the Six of Cups, last card out. The Six of Cups. Remember, you made me this hat because you thought it would be funny if I had cat ears. Since you know, the Chinese word for panda actually means bear cat. Cute, I know. The light attributes of the Six of Cups is kindness, compassion, sharing, and giving, and sweet affections. The shadow is unreasonable sacrifice, people pleasing, and childish sentiments. This is very interesting to me, and the reason being is because this could be how other people perceive you if you talk about, if you um, discuss what it is that you're discovering through 
interdimensional travel that they could see you as childish, that they don't take you seriously. And this is where I think you need to make these choices, maybe not uh, discuss until you find your soul tribe, so to speak, until you people see you as the empress, as they know that you've gone into hermit mode, deep within. They see you as this Virgo energy with the mind of Mercury, seeing karmic balance and graduation, and you're bringing others to this graduation. I've always thought that that the higher self is actually a future self coming back through the dreams to tell you of where you need to go because they've already lived it. This is your future self in a different realm, in a different dimension, in a different time, space, matter, right? So the opportunity is coming to you as I see it here on the table, pile number two. Really have to talk about you discovering your soul, your soul's purpose, and where you're going. How you can interact with other realms, how you can really analyze and you and learn about your dreams, about um, seeking karmic balance, being living in the present and not worrying about how others perceive you because the opportunities you are going to see long before they do and that you will be a guide, you will be a leader in taking I'm going to say the collective up to the next level into graduation mode as a species as we graduate from these lower levels into higher levels of consciousness. And that's what I see for you, pile number two. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number three. How are you? It's your Force Fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, today's pick a card is what opportunities are coming your way. Pile number three. Let's take a look. First card out. I'm going to shuffle here and put the intentions into each deck. Let the cards fall as they may. What opportunities are coming all the cards are sticking. Um, it's very humid here at the 100 Acre Woods and the cards are just so sticky. What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number three. What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number three, what opportunities are coming your way? I'm just gonna take the top one there. What opportunities are coming your way? Pile number three. What opportunities are coming your way, pile number three? What opportunities are we? This one wanted to jump out. And this one. What opportunities are coming your way, pile number three? What opportunities are coming your way, pile number three? I see this one. Oh. And this one. And the cards are also curling <laughs> with the humidity, some of the thinner ones. What opportunities? Are coming your way, pile number three. Let's take a look. What opportunities are coming? These ones really wanted to come out. I think there's two here. There are. We'll put that one there. And panda deck, last deck out. What 
opportunities are coming your way, pile number three? What opportunities? This one definitely wants to come out. And I'm not sure if this is one or two. They are very much sticking. Two and three. And last stick out. What I call the little baby deck, but it's an astrological deck. And let's do this one. Alright, let's start with that astrological deck. The 11th house, society. And Leo. Leo's been coming up quite a bit in the pick a card reads. Astrologically, I'm not sure what's going to happen in Leo, but something to do with Leo. So. Again, it, there's very much a sense of leadership, of people standing up for their morals and values and what it is they believe in, um, what's important to them, um, is very much and being brave, not, of not being worried about being cancelled or whatever, is, is really the feeling I get from Leo. The 11th house is community, friendship, wishes, charity, groups, earned wealth earned wealth, not wealth that's just been given to you, but earned wealth, friendships, wishes, charity, groups, and community. Communities are coming together. Agreed. Um, let's take a look at Leo. The strengths of Leo, brave, playful, leader, fun, warm, protective, generous, and charismatic, but the weaknesses are egotistical, domineering, stubborn, controlling, and a show-off. So I really, when I feel the positives or the, the strengths, of the Leo card, it is being brave, about being a leader, um, but doing it in a way that is playful, fun, and warm, protective, and I'm very much getting a parent um, energy from this, and protecting our children from the ideologies or their indoctrination of what's going on right now in the world. The golden rule. I haven't seen this in a long time, and it's funny that it comes along with that Leo, that protective, that ruler, uh, the bravery of Leo, the compassion and and heart, because Leo really does have a big heart. Let's take a look at the golden rule. Isn't this what they used to say? Your grandparents used to talk about the golden rule? Hmm. I think it's at the end here. Let's take a look. Everything is sticking. Nope. Must be at the beginning. Oh, my apologies. The golden rule, right here. So I know it's in the middle. The golden rule. The crown of evolution that which crowns the soul, the guide to the spiritual pathway. This is cosmic balance and perfection reflected within you. Everything is perfect. You need, you only need recognize that and you come into rhythm with creation. The energy is always present. Your goal is to manifest it. Bringing its concept into your reality and living it draws you closer to creation within yourself. The golden rule is the crown of evolution, that which crowns the soul. The crown of evolution, that which crowns the soul, the guide to spiritual pathway. And when it's in the, that 11th house, is the collective society, are you going to lead those along with that golden rule? And that is everything is, in fact, perfection. Everything is perfect. You only need to recognize that. And you come into rhythm with creation, which comes from within. That everything is perfect. And isn't it funny how um, the golden rule, that is very interesting. The child of the moon. Oh, the moon. That, that's, I don't know where, child of the moon. 
Moonchild. I think it was um, Robert Phoenix. I was in one of his lives and he had mentioned, he was talking about cancer and he had mentioned how cancer kind of, as far as zodiac signs, it's, 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 it's cancer, right? Can we not think of a better name than cancer? And he said, moon child. And I thought that was a fantastic, and here it is on my table. Forgiveness, transcending the ego, which again speaks to the weakness of Leo, is that ego. 36, let's take a look at this one. I'm very interested in this. 36. Forgiveness, transcending the ego. It is time to allow the cycles of time, the tides and the flow of her of life herself, and even the power of the moon's cleansing light to help you forgive someone. For if you are suffering right now, it must be due to a feeling of resentment or dislike that remains within you. There is nothing that forgiveness and her power cannot heal, but how to do this when life seems to flood us with memories of incidents that have wounded us. This beautiful fairy is clearing her energy within and that's what the golden rule talks about is the energy within and the healing light, the reflective solar energy, Leo energy of the crystal moon. If we place ourselves under the healing light of the moon, our inner energy centers known as the chakras there are many more than seven are bathed with her light. As the mineral makeup of the moon is very heavy in crystals, it is incredibly healing to lie out under her light and release to her our angers and resentments. What we need most is to let go. Period. Period is a crystal that the moon is made up of. Geologists uh, would prefer to this as olivine or olivine, olivine. Peridot eases out, teases out and gently lifts away from our chakra system, our physical cells and our light body, any wounding energies that are causing us to feel, think, anger. Um, period will also respectfully assist us to acknowledge where our ego is involved. Please do not think the fairies are condemning your ego for they know that in many ways your ego assists you, helping you to live and can be a beautiful helper, but your ego can and will sometimes interfere with your well-being out of the misguided attempts to, to it makes to protect you, and Leo does talk about protection. The angelic fairy is a child of the moon and thus the bringer of forgiveness. You must conduct a forgiveness ceremony as um, sincerely as you can in order not to cre recreate a situation that has previously hurt you. While you're still vibrating to that energy of the past, it cannot help but repeat itself, even if the egos do grow fainter. You can attain enlightenment and lessen of the burdens, a reduction of grief, a return of good cheer and optimism, again, that Leo energy through forgiveness. By forgiving those who have hurt you or persecuted us, we allow ourselves to be free. It is only when you your repeating of the same cycle can be done with it, after you're, you're done repeating of this cycle. When you receive this card, ask the fairies to assist you to help you find the opportunities to exercise your forgiveness muscles. Ask them to help you clear under the moonlight and watch them clear and brush from you all the debris that is causing you pain. Just volunteer for this. Just allow it to happen. Just be willing, be open, and then it can help you, free you from your past and allow you to step into the present. You will know you have forgiven when reminders of the person or situation no longer cause you to stress. You will see the blessings and lessons. You will not allow this to take the place again because forgiveness frees us from the shackles of the pain that tie us to the past and people we have long left behind. When we do not forgive, we are energetically and quite literally dragging them around behind us and that is what weighs us down and can hold us back from our true potential. Forgiveness is very much a key. 
bear. It's your totem animal. Integrity, compassion, clarity, self-reflection, contemplation, single-mindedness, self-discipline, prosperity, and enterprise. Bears also very, um, like they, there's a reason why they say mama bear. Very protective energy. It's a self-reflection. They're solitary animals. They don't really pack like wolves do, um, or they don't have a pride like lions do. They are individuals. Uh, the, the cubs will stay with mom for about two years, and then after they're on their own. So it's it's that's only you will only see a small group of bears, um, maybe one or two cubs with a mom or a mama bear. And so being solitary creatures, they do. It's interesting that the self reflection and contemplation. Um, they ca they can as an animal get single-minded especially if there's berries or anything around that's all they they'll go right for it the self-discipline and prosperity the self-discipline is to forgive with this child of the moon card the self-discipline is to know that all is for a reason and there is perfection it is that lies within you and it's very interesting that the opportunities that are coming your way all have to do with self-reflection and forgiveness of those that have hurt you on the happy path. And that's what's going to bring you to that happy path is forgiveness. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Well, you got to love that. That's number five. Interesting. Buddha says, your description of paradise is beautiful, the Buddha continued, yet it is insufficient and does little justice to the glory of the pure land created for the higher training of the Bodhavistas and Buddhas before they return again to help this world. The worldly can speak of it in the worldly way only. They use worldly similes and the worldly words, but that pure land in which the pure live is more beautiful than one can say or imagine. The six of the eight auspicious symbols, the pair of golden fish, swim freely in the happy waters of abundance. Combat the fires of attachment with good judgment and faith, knowing that these waters are plentiful. Any happiness shared is readily returned in kind. This talks about attachment. This talks about there is no path to happiness, but happiness is, in fact, the path. I say unto you, I live in the pure land of eternal bliss even now, while I am still in the body. I preach the Dharma to you and the whole world so that all may attain the same peace and the same happiness. And this really, your opportunities are coming to you when you forgive, when you realize that you are perfection, that, there, that all is perfect. And when you come to that realization, then that's when happiness, release of hurt, of pain, and with forgiveness, it starts with forgiving yourself. And then once you can forgive yourself, that's when you can forgive others. Enlightenment, and that's exactly what this card talks about. And returning the favor and that's funny because that's what Buddha talks about as well kind of what goes around comes around now 82 returning the favor I don't think in a petty way we'll find out during the darkest time of Zeta history when they thought their species would be extinct humans helped them this immense and selfless gifts will never be forgotten now their species has passed through the crisis and the Zetas are returning the favor by offering us their wisdom, help, love in the variety of ways. This is, a con this is a connection card, which means that you have a connection to the Zeta race and their energy and their energy is available to you to in this life to tap you tap into your spiritual path. You have also had at least one lifetime in Zeta. Open yourself to the energy and prepare your heart to expand. And that's in the presence. Enlightenment, 97. 
the Zetas had a tangible experience of moving from fear to awakening. And I feel that's exactly what the humans are going through right now, but it was not an easy one. Through this crisis, they had to first learn to embrace emotion as a valid part of existence, and then at the same time, not to attach too much emotion, but to rise above it. And again, we're talking about attachment, attachment to hurt, attachment to those that have wronged you, attachment to. Um, Encountering this paradox was essential to their transformation as a species. The same lesson is being asked of you now. Embrace and honor all aspects of who you are, even those who you don't like. At the same time, know that mind, emotions, of body are not who you are. Expand consciousness beyond them. This is enlightenment. Exactly. That there is no path to happiness. That happiness is the path. And it's a choice to be happy. Or you can be a victim, sad, miserable, resentful, by all means. All the weaknesses of Leo, absolutely, of the ego, protecting. So I won't get hurt again. I'm not going to let open up my heart. I'm not going to let people in. I'm not going to trust people. This is really the lesson for you, pile number three, to see that with forgiveness, opportunities will follow. Let's take a look at the tarot. The world. Beautiful. The ending of one almost lifetime and the beginning of another of another and the seven of swords it's the ending of lies betrayal of fear anger resentment king of wands leo energy ace of pentacles brand new beginning and it's a solid one that, beginning that you can trust and the two of pentacles and this i really see as this balancing of of juggling between the old world and new world between feeling resentful and feeling enlightened and it's this back and forth you cannot sort of serve two masters it's you believe and trust in the goodness of people in the souls that surround you in god or you don't trust them and it's either or and it's this juggling back and forth today i do today the next day i won't or i may not um not to judge at all i've been in this energy of lying to yourself of of saying there because one person has hurt you everyone is going to hurt you these are lies that we tell ourselves to protect ourselves so that we stay in hermit mode we stay in our homes we stay there's you know in this um state of a fear and then you sort of snap yourself out of it and with forgiveness with true forgiveness as the child of the moon card states that when the idea, the thought of this person that has hurt you no longer either triggers you or gets you into that state of fear. That's when you know forgiveness has really taken place. The Ace of Cups. That's self-love. Right beside that Leo card. And the Star. Hope, healing, and the Magician. And what is it that you're manifesting in the future? opportunities after healing and after a lot of self-love of filling up your own cup of forgiveness this is what's going to bring these opportunities to your doorstep that you are going to manifest with a different oh let's say energy frequency not that of victim not that of of um resentment of harboring these fearful energies, these fearful thoughts, these fearful feelings, these feelings of have not, of lack, of resentment, but that of hope, humanity, the hope in humanity, the hope in thyself, the hope that you can manifest anything, that all is as it should be, that as Buddha says, there is no path to happiness, but that in fact, happiness is the path. Do you choose to be happy? Are you manifesting happiness? Are you seeing the opportunities with the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups come at you? Coming for you? Being handed to you? Let's take a look at the tarot. The Light and Shadow, 21, the last of the major. The world. Total, totality, divine nature, nourishing, cosmos, the mandala of existence. The universe is an infinite lotus, infinitely blooming and expanding. The world imagined as Gaia, boundless mother of all life, self-realization and completion of the individual soul, integrating with the cosmos, harmony with the world spirit. Beautiful. That is beautiful, successful, 
victorious energy of really finding out who you are and what your role is in this world. Fruitlessness, Seven of Swords, a misguided enterprise, a childish prank, a rash endeavor, um, a daring gesture, a risky venture, but not a fatal one. The Seven of Swords are the burden of a sly, smiling soldier. He is carrying off the weapons of his adversaries. He has left behind a few of the swords, and his enemies have discovered him and rise to pursue him. Will the youth escape safely? How foolhardily was it to um, abs abscond with his hall? Will he prevail with the speed and grace, or will he be captured by his pursuers? Like Odysseus, he is a crafty fellow, willing to take risks, but he has placed himself in danger, and it remains to be seen whether he prevails or triumphs. The moon, harbinger of hidden difficulties, adorns his brow. Constellation, Aquarius, lies underneath his feet. I think it is moon in Aquarius that is the Seven of Swords energy. And we have Child of Moon, which talks very much about transcending the ego and forgiveness. So are you lying to yourself about those who have hurt you, lied to you, that have stolen from you, that have maybe stolen your time, your years, your your trust, have stolen it from you? And are you then holding on to it instead of forgiving? Again, these are all very... Um, it takes time. It really does to, for, to truly forgive. You can say, yeah, I forgive them. But I also feel forgiveness is forgiving yourself for not seeing the red flags, maybe not listening to your intuition by following your ego. This person looks good on paper. This person, you know, um, has had successful businesses, you know, and so I'm going to go into business with them. Meanwhile, then you actually go into business with them and you see that they have lied, that they have um, falsified whether it be uh, successes or what have you. You actually talk to people that work with them and said, I never work with them again. These are all lies. Lies, 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 says the Seven of Swords. And I think you're coming with the world to a realization that you've got to stop lying to yourself. To see the opportunities moving forward, pile number three, forgiveness is very much the key. Finding your own happiness within and moving forward with those opportunities that you are manifesting with the magician see what the pandas say with the magician did you know that you can shoot sparkles out of your fingertips and make flowers blossoms and grow did you know that you can do magic and that you are powerful and they simply cannot fail unless you quit earth water wind and fire they are all at your command now go blow something up light attributes creation, imagination, empowerment, and kick-ass awesomeness. The shadow attributes, manipulation, arrogance, destruction, and misuse of power. And isn't that what the weakness of Leo is? Is that arrogance, that manipulation, destruction, and the misuse of power. And that might have been what you've experienced, but knowing that you can manifest with creation, imagination, empowerment, and basically you are kick-ass awesomeness. The star is right beside that's hope, that's healing. The star is, when you wish upon a star, these are so sticky. Oh yes, it's you, come and sit on the branch with me and put your sorrows in that bowl. Again, those sorrows in that bowl right over there. To be released, of course, and that's with forgiveness. What else? And sing with me. Twinkle, twinkle, giant star, I wonder what you are, a up above the world so high, telling us we will be all right. Twinkle, twinkle, giant star. Because not all hope is lost. Rest, rejuvenate, healing, hope, and optimism. But the shadow attributes of this card is pessimism, waiting to be rescued, and a sad sack of sadness. Don't be a sad sack. Opportunities are not going to come your way because you're not even going to see it because you're focusing on what didn't happen, what hasn't happened, who's lied to me, how they hurt me. The Ace of Cups, and this is where we end, at the Ace of Cups, because this is self-love. The Ace of Cups, shh, don't tell anyone. I just put all my love in there for other pandas to find, as much as my little panda heart can muster. Anyway, which is a lot. Oh, since you're here, can you can have it all. 
Here it is, all my love, but of course you deserve it. Don't be silly. Emotional openness, heart expansion, cosmic healing, which is the 97 enlightenment card, cosmic healing, dreams, which is the star, and wishes come true. Your wishes come true. When you see your own magic through the golden rule that all is perfect within, that you are in fact the magician, that you have Ace of Pentacles, opportunities coming your way along with an open heart, an open mind, that you, there are more people out there that will be kind and loving to you than the ones that you hurt. But if you're on that frequency, that's what you're going to call in. So with forgiveness, rise above and enlighten yourself to see that you have really closed out a karmic cycle that you are no longer putting up with the seven of swords you're no longer maybe acting within the energy of the seven of swords calling in those lies and deceptive people it's a minority it seems like because of what is being projected on social media on legacy media on corporate media that there is lies and deception everywhere there are I'm not gonna I'm, there that's a fact but there are more kind people in this world, there's seven billion of us than there are. It's just the loudest voices are the ones that are programming us to believe, to stay, and to fear. So that is what we're manifesting. That is what we call in the lack, the, the have not mentality. That's where we, they want us to stay. Now, the opportunities, and we have two aces, the ace of cups. So your opportunities are going to be with love, with money, Coming your way is when you realize that you manifest what it is that you bring in. And it, it keep going back to that child of the moon. We are in cancer season, which is the moon child. And you are bringing in that which you believe. So what do you believe, pile number three? Do you believe that you have golden opportunities? Do you believe that you have full cups of loving people coming your way, whether it be through platonic or romantic relationships? What do you believe? And that's the question I have for you. Do you believe that opportunities are coming your way? Because I do. I see it all over my table. And it starts with forgiveness. And that's what I see for you, pile number three. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now.